Hey everyone, hope you're good. Today I want to show you build two of the block generator, but make sure you watch the first video if you haven't seen build one. Anyway, so I created this a couple of weeks back and since then quite a lot of people have also been asking how it works. So if I get time later on this video, I will get time. I'm gonna be discussing how I actually did some of these concepts and how I actually made this work. Let's just jump into it guys on three, two, one. So first let's go through what's new in build 2. So before you get too excited, I hate fun, so no new gameplay features were added in this build. But the UI improvement for the generator was massive, I did so much for that. It's over like double the amount of lines of code or something. Anyway, so when you go on the generator for the first time, as you can see it's been completely redone. There's now a new tutorial as I'm going through right now. But I'm going to completely skip this because let's who you know who cares about valuable insight let me just give you my unvaluable insight right now so basically uh, the first one we've got we've got a create block button we've got an edit block button we've got a delete block button and we've also got an export command which kind of just pops up with the commands you need so with that said let's quickly just go through the generator right now i guess i can create a new block so if you click this there's a nice little draggable you know pop up here if I give an error, it gives a nice little error box I can drag around to. It says you need to give the block a name, obviously. So if I just go to fresh code, let's create, I don't know, what should we create? Let's create a pot of gold, why not? So if I name this gold pot, and I press done, it's going to open up this first box. Ooh, 3D spinning head. So as you can see, the first option is stage one design. So same as before, the red stars are required. So if I try to go to the next page without completing required steps, it's gonna tell me. And I'm just gonna paste in this and it's gonna give me a little 3D spinning preview. I can't really see the uh, pot of gold at the top because it doesn't show the tops and bottoms, but anyway. If you can tell already, those 2D previews I have still reused here with the actual blocks here. But if I just quickly redo this and I paste the sim again, as you can see, I can hide the hat layer. This one didn't actually have a hat layer really, but sometimes it looks a bit weird. So sometimes it might just be like a solid color because the uh, the person who designed the texture didn't, you know, set it up properly. But yeah, this doesn't actually make an impact on your block. This is just for the whether this preview should have hidden or shown. We've got directional still traits for the next page. So now I've done all the required fields. I can go to the next page. The stage two real block and traits. I've got little options here. What's a real block? What's a trait? They're also nice little draggable things. So yeah, I'm, I can put in a real block like before. I can do real block MBT. If I go to the third page, this is the drops page. So I've got the drop itself. This pops up the options, same as before. As I said, they're the exact same options. It just looks nicer with these nice little like scroll things as well. And I'm just gonna leave all them and if I press finish, as you can see, it's quite hard to tell with the black background, but it does indeed have a pot of gold there and I can click these to select them and hide them everything and this is what the selected thing for so if I try to click this I need to select a block so if I re-click our I shall click a different one I'll click Humboy so if I click oh by the way the reason I've actually got things here is because I've already this also stores your blocks in cache so if I just reload the page and I scroll down oh no I just need to scroll down but as you can see, it still stores all of these, so I can shut my whole computer down and relog, and it's going to uh, save the blocks, which is a really helpful feature. But anyway, if I just click Homeboy and I go Edit, it's now going to reopen all this stuff, and it's going to have saved all the settings. So I'll undo that. And yeah, it's really cool. And we've also got Delete, so say, you know, who wants a pot of gold anymore? I'm going to press Delete. It does ask you to confirm, you know, because I don't want people to accidentally delete their blocks or something, you know. Uh, so I can cancel that or I can Oops, I pressed edit. I can go delete and delete and it's gone. I can also go You know, I want the Humboy command. So I go here It's gonna pop up with command for Humboy. I can just click this press copy then hide if I go back into game slash give at p command block Same as before nothing's changed It still works in the newest snapshot of the game there's only one bug in the new snapshot of the game, which I'm not going to fix yet, and that's the Falling Sands. Falling Sands are broken in 19W8B, uh, that's correct. But apart from that, blocks work completely normally in this version as well, so you don't have to worry about that. So hopefully Falling Sands 
bug is fixed. Uh, this must be a problem with the actual game instead of my commands because it worked in previous versions. But I'm going to wait to see if it gets fixed on the 1.14 release and if it's not then uh, in build 3 I'll fix that. But anyway that's done with, we're done with the build 2 changes. Now let's talk about what we're, the second topic of this video was. So now I want to talk about some of the techniques I used. This isn't as much of a tutorial as there isn't going to be a write up about the commands on my website. It's more of a brief description to give you some more insight. So let's begin. To start on the most basic level, how have I created these blocks? Well essentially in 1.14 they added a feature to resource packs called custom model data. This means you can give an item several looks and sizes without replacing their vanilla look. Knowing that player heads have already been given lots of looks using custom skulls, I created two separate models. One resizes player heads in the inventory to look like normal blocks, and this was done by cows to best slash Temi official. And the other one I did, and it resizes the actual player head itself in an entity's hand to look correctly sized to fit an entire block. This texture actually allows you to choose your block design, that's how the generator works. Because this texture is just on an invisible armor stand's arm, this means we need a real block to go underneath. Is this starting to make more sense now? This is where the real block term catchy came from. So this is just a texture, so we need a real block to go underneath it to actually supply with the mining. But how is this all automized? Well, that's where the data back in generator comes in. I'm going to skip all the minor details, but essentially when you press the export button on the generator website, it essentially gives you the exact same command every single time, except it inserts your different uh, options you put in into the MBT. Most entities can't support custom MBT like this, however, luckily for us, items are an exception. So by summoning an armor stand holding an item, we can store all the MBT into that item. Then that armor stand you summoned in using the generated command is teleported to zero zero to be permanently kept. Then when you try to use the block book, it just lists all the entities that are in that zero by zero space and also gives you the other options like info, get and remove for each one. It's probably more clear what these buttons actually do now, but the remove kills the armor stand so it's no longer listed there. The get uses the new data modify to basically make a copy of the item it's holding and then give that to the player. And finally the info button prints a tell raw message. That is also pre-generated by the generator and stored in the item's custom MVT. That's it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I may do more in-depth tutorials on some of these techniques I've used. But for now, I don't really want to focus all my attention on this command project. I want to focus on more other projects so I can do some other data packs. They're not necessarily all going to use generators because, you know, sometimes it's just fun to have just simple data packs. I will add updates to this, like I said previously, I'm not changing my mind on that. But it's not the only content I'm going to be working on. I don't want all the new people to think that's the only thing I'm planning on doing. Don't worry, I am sure the other projects are going to be good too. <laughs> anyway. I hope you all enjoyed this video, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.